I want to get this in order. I want to organize this and I want to do it the easiest way possible. And this principle will work regardless of what program you're using because we're going to learn about metadata. Now, first off, I'm going to use FUBAR 2000 as my music player. And I've got that right here. This theme is not how it looks out of the box. It's kind of scary out of the box, but I've already made a video on how to install this theme, which is the one I use. It's really easy. So just go ahead and click on that link in the description, or you can just download the theme and install it. I'll put links down there if you already know what you're doing. And we're gonna use this copy to organize that library. WhoKeys is where I get my Windows keys, and there's a reason for that. They have OEM Windows keys, which are a fraction of the price of the regular Windows keys. They've got Windows 11 Pro, they got Windows 10 Pro, they got Home, they got Office 2021, and we also have 2019 and 2016 as well. All month long, they've got their Black Friday sale going on, but we have a coupon code that'll make the price even lower. Use TS25 to save 25%. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. So the first thing you need to do after you get FUBAR open and download it. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I will say one thing. I do recommend doing a portable installation of FUBAR. That way all the components and everything are in one directory and nothing goes into your app data folder, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, do whatever you like. Anyway, so once you get in here, you need to set up your, your music library. So just go to your preferences up here by clicking File, Preferences, and then click on Media Library, and you can add the directory of your music. I've just come over here and clicked on my music folder and hit Select. So that's it. And all my stuff I've just thrown in there randomly without much rhyme or reason. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that FUBAR doesn't care about any of the folder structure. It can browse by folder structure, but generally it uses metadata and, and tagging. If you don't want to double click on things and you want to single click, go to File, Preferences, and then click on Media Library. And at the bottom here, Library Viewer Selection Playlist Enable. Apply. Okay, now every time I click on anything, it'll go to the playlist. Let's just click on some random thing in here. How about some Dungeon Synth? So I'm going to bring up Belk Keeper here. Now if I just right-click on any individual file, I can hit Properties and see the metadata. Or if I want to do the whole album, I just right-click and hit Properties. Or another thing you can do is Alt-Enter. Just click it, Alt-Enter. And that'll show you all the metadata. So I do like to fill in the composer when I know it, so I'd have to look up this one. But right now, the main thing is artist and album artist. You want to make sure that these two are filled out. Now, artist and album artist do not have to be the same thing because sometimes you'll download a compilation, you know, like the, and that'll be your album artist will be sweating to the oldies or whatever, Richard Simmons. And then each artist for each different song will have a different value. So that's, that's good because then we can organize things by the album artist, even if it's a compilation. And then I always fill out my genre because that's a great way to organize organize things. And then I like to fill out my date as well, because if you have a whole bunch of stuff from, from one single person, like we got this here, we have a bunch of different albums. Now we can arrange those by the date that they came out, 2022, 2019. So there we go. That's great. But what does that do for us as far as like organizing the structure of things on our hard drive? And I do want to say one more thing, which is really cool, like a video game soundtrack like ActRaiser 2. Click on Properties, scroll down, and you see like at the bottom we have add new so you can actually add new fields to this i've got the composer i've got the artist but i like to know what system this was on so this is um super nintendo so click on add new field and type system and now here i can type snes or whatever you can add new fields for anything you can say like produced by or whatever hit apply there we go properties so see like here i've got system and with if you're using my theme It'll show the system right there if available. If it's not available, it won't show there. But I, I love being able to do this. Click on my thing and it'll show like the system up there. All right, the next thing we need to do is learn about our different file operations. This is where the magic happens. So click on file operations, hover on move to, and then click the dot, dot, dot. And it brings up this file operations menu. 
Now what happens here on the top, you put your destination menu. And then you have your file name pattern. One of the beautiful things about FUBAR is they have a system where you can basically change any part of FUBAR just by adding in some of these arguments right here. So we see the file name pattern right there. All right, so it's really intuitive. I'm gonna show you right here because all you have to do is just type what you think it would be and it usually works. If I want the album artist, I just do a percentage sign and then type album artist. There, and then percentage. And so I want the album artist as the folder and then slash. And then I want to have it be the date. Now, some of your stuff may or may not have dates if you didn't do it correctly. So what you can do is put a bracket and then put date and then put your percentile sign and then another bracket. I'm actually gonna do a space dash space. There we go. So that way it's date space dash space. And anything inside this bracket will be invisible if there is no date information. That's how that works. And then right outside here, I'm going to put the album. There we go. And then I'll put slash. And let's say I want to know the track number. So we can just do, and this is another thing that some tracks may or may not have, so I'll do this. Hopefully if you've gone through and tagged everything, but you know. And then as soon as that's finished, I want a dot right after that. I'll put a space there. And then the title is the thing we want at the end. If you don't have a title, you can just put file name and that'll be the actual file name, but hopefully everything has a title in the metadata. All right, so it's gonna go into this structure here. I'll just copy and show you. So copy this and drop it over here, there. So now what it's doing here, it's going into my music folder, which right there. And then the date, space dash uh, space. And then there's the title of the album. And then inside that folder, we have the track number and then the title right there. So if I run this, it's going to organize everything into a folder structure just like that. Now, once we have everything tagged, we can actually select all, 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 just select everything by going over here, control A, and then right click, file operations, move to, and we can just run this exact same thing. Now we can save these as presets. Well, we have to title a new one. There we go, move to music. Move to music D, that's my D drive. Save, there we go. Now we can just, if we have different things we wanna have a separate folder for video game music, we can do that. But I'm just gonna move everything to one place first. One other thing you might wanna do is make sure it moves the entire source folder. That'll get all the, the images and JPEGs and cover art and everything. And then make sure you're removing the empty source folders because if they're empty, why do you need a bunch of folders cluttering up everything? It's gonna take a minute, but it's gonna reorganize our folders. And it's gonna be fun because I'm gonna watch this happen over here. You ready? Run. Now watch these folders, stuff that's unnamed. We'll fix that later. Do do do. It's just getting moved. Everything's getting moved. All right, so let's just take a look. Now everything's organized. If I go in here, well, look at that. Just like we said, everything's been renamed, moved, and organized. Perfect. Look at that. So yeah, now our stuff is gonna be nice and organized. See how these worked. Yep, there's all my stuff. And all the, all the stuff that was in there moved with it. So now that you understand that, we can go a step farther and say, what if you've downloaded some stuff and you wanna convert that? Maybe you downloaded some FLAC files and you wanna convert that over to Opus. And we can use these same principles. But we're gonna need one additional thing. Head back over to FUBAR, and we're going to download something called the free encoder pack. Now this will allow you to encode files into all these different things here. I'll actually need to go ahead and close FUBAR to install this. There we go. Download this and I'll teach you how to use these conversion tools. If you want to use AAC, you'll need to download more things and you'll have to read here. I'm not covering that because I don't use AAC anymore and I don't think you should either. You should use AUG or Opus, but Opus is really the way to go. All right, so come on down here, click free encoder pack. It's downloading. Once it's finished, we're going to install it and just tell it where your foobar directory is. There's mine, okay. So just find your foobar directory, hit next, and you can tell it what to install. I don't need the Apple one if I do that. So you can just, you know, get whatever you want. Yeah, I'll keep all the rest. All right, it's installed. That's all there is to it. Now you're gonna need some music. So let's grab some. This is my music. If you didn't know I make music, you're all awesome. If you hope you like it. Um, this last last couple albums have been slightly chiptune, slightly DOS RPG music, slightly dungeon synth. So, Enjoy it. If you own it, 
or you own any other thing on Bandcamp, or maybe you grab something on Soulseek, you can just come over to your Bandcamp profile, and let's say we're downloading this song. So just find it in your library, click on Download, and then I'm going to download the FLAC. And I'll show you how to convert that. There's a lot of different things you can download. If you're happy with Og Vorbis, just download it and go. But I like to download FLAC and then convert it into Opus. So download this. Once it's finished, it's going to be a zip file. So you need to, you can't really convert things when they're a zip file. So I'm going to do something sloppy, but it's okay. I'm just going to put a new folder on my desktop here full of stuff. And it doesn't matter. Look, see, look at this. It's a mess. But I don't care. Throw it right there. All right. All the stuff's in there now. Let's open FUBAR back up. If you didn't put anything on your taskbar, now's a good time to do it. If you're on Windows 11, you can't drag and drop, so you have to right click and tell it to go to taskbar, but I'm on Windows 10 still, so I can drag and drop it to my taskbar. There we go, so it's opened up that folder on my desktop. Watch this, drag it in here. There we go. All right, so now these are all FLAC files, as you can see. Let's go ahead and right click on that and do, now we have convert, isn't that beautiful? I've already created some presets, but let's ignore those and create our own preset. So I'm actually, first thing I'm gonna do is actually grab the file operations, you just do this, follow along, move to. I'm going to grab this thing that we made earlier. Remember this string? I'm grabbing that. So just copy that. All right, now, convert. Go to the dot, 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 and here we have our conversion window. We have format, destination, processing, and other. Let's start with the format. I'm going to use Opus, and then we want to edit that. Opus is really transparent around 224. You cannot tell the difference between this and like a perfect wave file. I, I will put a thousand dollars down. No one's going to be able to sit around and listen to 50 songs, you know, 25 Opus and 25 FLAC and be able to tell which ones are the Opus. Not going to happen. For most people, around 160 kilobytes a second is perfect for Opus. So check your ears. You know, like do a couple at 167. You can like you know, make your library way smaller. But I like to do 224 just to make sure. And these are going to be, you know, like a third smaller than my 320 kilobyte uh, MP3s and sound just as good or better, probably better. All right, so that's my file format. Let's hit back. Destination. Now we can just render them and have them go into the same folder. But you know what? I'm going to have them go straight into my music folder. So D, there we go. It's going into our music folder. And then I'm going to convert each track to an individual file and then just drop our argument in there. So as we convert them, it's going to convert them and then put them into the correct spot in our music folder. So it'll go into the D music and then it'll go into the Zweihander folder and then into the just like everything else. All right, then we can hit back and then we need one thing. We don't need to worry about, you know, processing, but we do need one thing, other. Now other allows us to copy files to the destination folder. So we want to make sure that all those images get copied over as well. So what we do here is we just say, okay, yes, we need to copy any JPEGs. So star.jpg, that just means any JPEG. And after each argument, we need a semicolon. So it's going to look for JPEGs first. And then, in, you know, I need to do PNGs because some of them are PNG, star.png. And you know what? For stuff that's like old and weird, I'll do JPEG spelled weirdly. There we go. Star. JPEG. There we go. Now we've got all that set up, let's save this. I'm going to create a new preset and we'll title this Opus 224 to music. There we go. Opus 224 to music. All right, now before we copy this, I'm going to click properties and just check all the metadata first. And as I thought, some of the metadata is missing because when you download things from Bandcamp, they don't put in the genre for whatever reason. So let's just call this, let's make it Dungeon Synth? I don't know what this last album I made is. Kind of, but yeah, we'll do that. And then I'll put myself as the composer. There we go. And I don't need to put a performer or anything like that. Apply. And now we can do the conversion. So right click on it. Convert. And then we're going to click on that Opus 224 to music. There we go. So here's my Zweihander folder. That just appeared. And all this Opus. See those temp files? It's all getting converted. And look, all the JPEGs moved over here. So there, it magically did all this. And now it's in our in our folder. And it shows us the converted output. There we go. That's what we got. Cool. So now all you have to do is just go and delete. Gone. Now once you get fast at this, it's ridiculously easy. <laughs> Item no longer found because we drag and dropped it in there. So that's it. That's how I keep everything organized. But there's one thing I do to make things a little bit easier on myself. And that is I create hotkeys. So preferences, Q, 
keyboard shortcuts. And when it comes to conversions and file operations, I create different hotkeys for each one. So let's do one for file operations. And this will be the move tool. So I'm just going to type move. You have to click on add new first. And then you'll look for the file operations down here. File operations, copy to, move to. I just wanted to open up that move to thing. Oh, you, when you're doing move to, you have to click the dot 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 if you want to bring up the dialog. Apply. All right, so let's just say we want to do a little bit of move to. So click on that, control M, and look at that. It brought that up. Now, why would you want to use different presets? Well, every now and then I like to do something weird. So I have my genres over here. I actually like to keep my dungeon synth in its own special spot. So I've got all these dungeon synth artists over here. So what I'm going to do is just control A, file operations, or I could do my control M now to bring up file operations. And, you know, let's do another one, music slash dungeon. There, and that'll just put all the dungeon Sith genre into its own spot. And I'll title this music to the dungeon. And then load it. I forgot the slash at the end there. Now this is going to move all my dungeon synth into a dungeon folder. Run it. Done. Check this out. Open folder. Now if I go into my music, there's a dungeon. And then there's all the dungeon synth. So you can do that if you wanted to with your genres or whatever. It's really, really easy to, to do this stuff. So after I set up the conversions, I like to repeat the last conversion over and over again. So let's just do convert. Here's all our different conversion things. Now you can have it set so that you can have a different hotkey for each conversion. So you can just throw stuff in there. But I generally like to do last used. There we go. That's just for me. You can do it however you like. And I'll do, uh, how about control L? I don't know. You can set up anything you like. All right, so now if I just come over here, click on that and push control M. Hopefully that'll help you organize your music library. And again, this video is brought to you by my music. Because if you're here hanging out, hopefully you like music. So head over and over to uh, Bandcamp. That's where my stuff is mostly um, right now. I might be putting it on itch.io later since Bandcamp was acquired. But even though it's been kind of rough for the people who work there, it's still the best thing for the artists as of now. Subject, subject to change. But anyway, thanks everybody for checking out the music. Thanks everybody for sticking around and watching the video. And hopefully this helps you keep your music organized. And hopefully this will help you like, you know, have your own music library on your computer. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is if you don't want to use FUBAR, you want to use something really easy, you know, just get Music B. It's easy. And it has the same kind of stuff. You can change the metadata. The same principles apply. Uh, and it can even automatically organize your music library based upon some criteria. But that's something you'll have to do on your own. The program's probably easier to use than FUBAR, but slightly less flexible and powerful. So, but it'll work on that as well. Anyway, I'll see you on the comments. Thanks for being awesome.